years ago, like anybody else, I was dropped off at school. You put your bag down, and you get out your utensils and start to focus. Then it hit me. A wave of fear covered my body as I sat down my desk. My, li my lungs started tightening up, depriving my body of oxygen, and then nothing. Like, a, like the wind, it came and then went. For 13 and a half years now, I've been living with epilepsy. For those who don't know what epilepsy is, it's a neurological disorder that causes the body to have seizures, may they be severe or not. I tell you that story because that's the day that my life changed for the worst. I say that because I lost my battle against epilepsy that day. I started having unre unrelentless seizures and at least 20 a day. So, as you can imagine, I couldn't play sports, I couldn't go to school, I couldn't hang out with my friends. I felt utterly useless, like a ragdoll. But I could handle feeling like a ragdoll. That wasn't the worst part of it. The worst part was I was aware the whole entire time. To elaborate, when I have a seizure, I usually black out first and then wake up afterwards. But with these, I was aware the whole entire time. Now you may be thinking, this TED Talk is about my life with epilepsy and how I've dealt with it. When in reality, it's about the emotions that it showed me. These include emptiness, sadness, anger, depression, and even hatred. Now, in my experience, I've only felt hatred once. And by hatred, I don't mean that feeling of anger that you get when it is uh, someone or something where you're a little mad. I mean that feeling where you're so enraged that it hurts in your stomach and burns. It misguides your judgment and misleads you to do things that you shouldn't do. The one time that I felt hatred the most was during this time period uh, when my seizures were out of control, to the point to where I had thoughts of ending my own life, which luckily I never did and never will because of one person, my big sister. My big sister is my best friend in sayings, and one day before all of this started, my seventh grade year, she, she's driving me around and we're talking about school and life while listening to music. I'm talking to her about how, sh how stressful school is and how I was being teased and mistreated and how my friends are helping it get better. And they, then eventually I bring up the point of, is life worth living itself? She stops me there and begins to lecture me. She starts to say how taking a life can be the most selfish thing that a person can do and that if I ever did, she would find me and beat me up. And boy, did those words stick with me. That those words in her point of view on the subject were one of the only things keeping me up in, a, in good spirits during this time. Well, that and goldfish. But no matter what your scenario is, these emotions can weigh you down. Especially in my scenario. It was as if I was like trying to swim in an ocean of despair. It's easy at first, but every single time something happens, it's as if a shackle attaches to your leg, your arm, and eventually you just can't swim. But you can make it to your surface. But on that note, I would like you to know that every one in seven school children deal with mental health problems. Every one in seven school children. Now I would like you to look around and think, if you can, of at least one person that's had something happen to them. They probably have a mental health problem. Now, I did get better, and so can you. And my situation is better. And after that ch terrible chapter in my life, I found a really good group of friends who, made my, me, who helped me find myself again. And in, any way, in every way, I, they have my trust, my faith, and I can say with ease, I would take a bullet for them. But happy emotions, such as happiness, faith, love, those p push you up and m give you power. And they, and they are almost exactly the opposite of toxic emotions. A study done by David Freiberg shows that people were shown different media and tend to elicit different emotions, and that the people that are shown kindness media tended to be more optimistic, showed signs of less anxious, and they were just overall happier. And so with that, you... Every once in a while, when you do see a kid sitting on the floor eating by themselves at lunch or struggling, all I ask of you is help them out. Sit down with them. Do anything you can to help them. 
Because if there's anything I could tell myself during that time period, it would have been reach out, talk to someone, because it really would have helped. And on that note, I would like you to know that the WHO estimates that roughly 800,000 people commit suicide each year. 800,000 people. One is too many. One is way too many. But 800,000? That's absurd. People need to get better at reaching out to those who may be suicidal and helping them find their way. Early, early intervention is key to producing a healthy mindset proven by scientific studies. And with that, I ask of you one thing. Reach out. Give someone a helping hand. It really can save life. Thank you.